Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee. If you are new, today's video is going to be a mental health video. We're gonna be talking about anxiety. I am somebody, if you are new, that struggles with anxiety. I'm very open about it on my channel. It's something that I feel like is more common than you think. I feel like my anxiety in particular is very overwhelming at times. It can be emotionally kind of exhausting. I came up with let me turn up my air conditioning. All right. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of journaled out some things. I have 10 things that have kind of helped me loosen up a little bit and stop being so high strung all the time and just kind of calm my anxiety, my inner like anxiety mind. So one of the things that has been kind of a more common theme in the past few weeks has been to ground myself, really focusing on what you truly want in life, where you came from, and just getting back to yourself. I feel like anxiety is constant like looking for ways to compare yourself or compare your situation whether that's looking at your previous self your future self comparing yourself to other people it's just not here anxiety is all over the place but here a lot has happened in my life recently where my mind has been all over the place where I'm losing my sense of self in a way which has caused my anxiety kind of stir up even more it's constantly looking for more I feel like I was always looking at myself and my present in a future tense. I feel like some people can probably get the opposite where they have like regret or shame or guilt over something that happened in the past and they're constantly worried about the past, but you really do have to zone in and focus on here and right now. For example, a lot of the things that have happened to me this year is the world of YouTube. That's what I do for a living and I've been meeting new people in the YouTube world. I've been introduced to new things about YouTube that I wasn't quite aware of and it's definitely shifted my perspective and focusing on my channel and the performance of my channel and if people like me and people's opinions and all this crazy stuff that was never really a problem before because I wasn't worried about it I wasn't introduced to it coming back to my why why did I start this why am I why do I do what I do and that's something that I really strive for is to always if you might if your mind starts shifting over to something that is not presently here and it's not you you really need to zone that back in and focus on grounding yourself figuring out your why and comparing yourself to yourself only and stop striving for more because right now you're living in such a blessing that one day when you do get more I'm telling you guys that saying more money more problems relates to so much in life whenever you're introduced to certain things um experiences or whatever your life has a ton more problems that come with it you almost look back at your past self and you're like oh man i wish i lived back in those like simpler times i looked so genuinely happy and hopeful for the future where like now i'm so high strung all the time and i'm just like constantly going and overwhelmed and emotionally exhausted and like <sighs> go back to your self your authenticity your truest person i hope that makes sense when we're introduced to a lot of new things whether that's people experiences um life the more we grow but also it comes with the more that we tr change and we kind of alter ourselves to become the new person that we're becoming and sometimes that could be away from your true authentic genuine self and it's so important not to lose yourself because once you lose yourself i'm telling you guys anxiety will go through the roof trust me from experience the second thing that i have is exposure therapy so this is something that i've also um delve into a little bit in my vlogs i'm sure you guys know if you do watch my vlogs but basically i have been challenging myself getting myself out of my comfort zone doing the things that i am so scared to do that i know for a fact i wouldn't do a couple years ago and it is so scary you have to put yourself in like a blur state and just go for it don't think too much just do it because once you do that overwhelming sense of excitement for yourself and confidence boost that you get in yourself is profound exposure therapy to me is something i've always strayed from because i'm like no that's the thing i'm afraid of like first i need to get in the right mindset and first i need to do this and like blah blah, blah and then i'll be ready but it's like you're never going to be ready unless you just do it and the more times that you do it the fear will slowly start to die down because you are exposed to that certain thing that you're scared about and you're getting used to it and it's becoming your new normal for example i when i first moved to the city i was so nervous to even go downstairs and like go to a market by myself did it, okay, now it's my new normal. I was afraid to go to the grocery store, did it, my new normal. I was afraid to venture out down this block, another block, another block, did it. And I found myself, I had ventured somewhere else with another girl, a friend of mine, went on the subway, came back, came out from the subway in a place that I didn't know that was a few blocks down from where I ventured to in my little area. So I knew I had to go down like a couple blocks of unknown and that was terrifying for me because I'm alone in the city and I don't know where I'm going and whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
fear is my in my mind you can tell how anxious i am just even thinking about it i remember seeing my cvs which was a few blocks from my apartment and i remember when i first moved here i thought cvs was so far away from my apartment that was once my scared zone and i remember walking down the street and i saw my cvs and i was like so familiar with it and i was like oh my god, I'm home. And I found comfort in seeing the CVS that was once my afraid zone. So there's like a graph or something that I'll pop here on the screen um, where it's like a bubble of your comfort zone and then every time that you venture away from that, your like circle will expand and grow. And I'm telling you guys, it's not just like your confidence, it's your potential to do more. It is the most gratifying feeling ever. And I find I am very quiet in my mind when I do the things that scare me the most. And the more that I do them, the more that just builds up and the more I can see myself like sitting up straight and like doing things that I would have never done if I was never exposed to certain things. Every time that something scary happens to you or you face your fear, it will literally feed your little like core and make you into the most confident, fulfilled person it's been amazing, I'm telling you guys. It's just, it's almost like addicting. The next thing that I have is to stop catastrophizing. I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically, I'm constantly thinking of like worst case scenario and I'm making things way bigger of a deal than it needs to be. The definition of catastrophizing is cognitive distortion. You are literally distorting your reality and your mind to make it scary and your body will respond. Your body is made to protect itself and when you are catastrophizing a situation in your head, you are going into almost like a fight or flight mode and your body is going to respond with that and you're going to get anxious and you're going to get scared and you're going to stray away. Way and you're gonna bow down a little bit and that is a boost to your like confidence your anxiety is winning the game you're basically taking a difficult situation and you're interpreting it as an exaggerated thought there's a book that I highly recommend to read if you guys read um, I'll leave a link down below um, it's an amazing book if you have anxiety but in that she had three magical questions that you ask yourself when you do start exaggerating these scenarios and the first one is what are the odds of that actually happening a lot of the times we come up with things in our head and you're like honestly that would that ever really happen? Number two, how bad would that really be if it did happen? Let's say whatever you're thinking about really did happen. How bad is that really? And then number three, how can I cope with this? Let's say it does happen. You can cope with it. You're gonna make it through. Yes, it might be a little bit scary. Yes, it might be a little bit dangerous. Yes, it might be painful, but there's been people who have dealt with so many different things. You are not unique, like as horrible as that sounds. You're not unique in your difficulties. There have been people going through things that you've gone through. People have surpassed those struggles that you feel like is like such an overwhelm right now it's such a big deal right now in your head you're gonna make it through and when you ask yourself these three questions you do tend to like feel a, like a relief of okay like I've got this it seems so big in your head but it's really like chill chill out the fourth one has to do more in terms of the way you look which I struggle with I struggle with a lot my anxiety is just one of them is like perfectionism. I am constantly thinking about my outer appearance. Do I look anxious? Cause I feel anxious. When these thoughts are running through my mind, I'm like, oh, sit up straight. If you're slouching, oh my God, like, are, is your hand shaking? Whatever display that I feel like I'm giving, I am constantly worried by my, my body language, the way I talk, my mannerisms. I don't know why it's just something that I deal with all the time. I feel like a lot of people deal with it actually. You're just constantly second guessing, literally and nitpicking every little thing about yourself. I was listening to a podcast and my friend Brooke actually was the one who quoted this. I'm gonna read you the quote and I was just like, she was talking about body positivity and I just like, I loved it so much. She said, focus on you and the confidence that you exude. If you carry that aura, that translates so much more than how you actually look. Bring that good energy. And that's so true. You just know when someone's confident in themselves and no matter what they look like, they just look so beautiful and they just exude this like great energy and like people are attracted to that energy. And if there's someone that is looks so beautiful and the most perfect human being that you've ever seen, yet they're like crouched down and they're shy and they're awkward. It's like, we are more attracted attracted to like energies and stuff so like why are we even sitting there thinking about that because you could be like looking amazing but then your lack of self-confidence almost creates a barrier between you and the person because you're giving off like this not good energy i just love that and it's so true like if you just own it own who you are own your imperfections my brother actually says the imperfections make the perfection and it's so true like a lot of people the thing that you're so self-conscious about is what makes you cute and beautiful in their eyes and it's so true just own yourself own it and just be like you know what i'm gonna shut my head off like this is who i am and all right how am i gonna have fun you know the next one is to trust in something bigger than yourself this is something that i feel like 
to each their own but I personally find a sense of comfort um, ever since I started watching Elevation Church I've been like talking to God and like praying to and I say God but it's honestly whoever's out there I'm not even kidding you guys like I'm kind of almost afraid to say this but ever since I started watching I've been watching for three weeks now and it's actually Sunday tomorrow so I'm gonna be watching for the fourth week in a row by the time you watch this video my life has been uphill like I have been struggling really bad I dealt with a death this year I moved to a new city alone obviously COVID a lot of things going on in terms of social media and the news and all of that and it's just been I've been I was I've never been as angry and sad and I have this year I just watched it one day I like came across one of his videos and now I just have like this sense of like comfort and safety knowing that I have like something that's bigger than me watching me and I know that sounds crazy because if someone told me that before I started watching it, I'd be like oh my god Oh, here we go but i'm telling you guys it's true and i got this same feeling when i was introduced to the law of attraction it's just the most calming feeling and i feel like everyone needs some sort of spirituality in their life because there is a calming effect a feeling of being just okay with anything that happens good or bad and knowing that like you're protected it's the weirdest feeling if you have a lot of anxiety or anything maybe you try to find something to put your faith in whether that's the universe, God, a religion, a thought process like the law of attraction, just anything like that that's bigger than you. Almost diving deeper into like souls and connections and like our human experience. It's just something that really does bring a sense of peace. And I find sometimes when my mind is going like crazy, if I think about that or like God or what I learned in church, I just instantly have this like cloud of relief over me and I'm just like, I'm good, I'm good. Like no matter what, I'm good. It's the most freeing feeling. It almost gives you like a purpose too. Like I'm aligned more with my purpose which is the first tip that I told you guys is to like ground myself I was having a lot of issues with what am I like here for like what's the purpose of this and I'm just learning to just really appreciate every little thing and I name three things that I'm grateful for again every night and it just sets me up for such a positive mindset and like I like to help people and I like to share these like life epiphanies with people again and it, it's a lot of good that's coming out of a lot of bad the next thing that I have is to stop searching for an answer all the time there's never gonna be an answer Answer. no one will ever know the answer no one knows anything no one does we're all figuring it out together constantly looking for an answer is the most exhausting feeling because you're never gonna find it and you're putting so much energy into something that's never gonna come sometimes we just need to give up control and know that we are not in control there's not one single person that knows what's gonna happen when it's gonna happen how it's gonna happen we're all just kind of living day by day and it's a scary kind of thought but at the same time it's like very fulfilling because i'm like oh okay chill like i don't have to stress about finding an answer because i just need to live in this moment be with it and eventually it'll go on to the next okay <laughs> You're never fully gonna know whether that's what you want to do in your future, how to attain a goal, bigger problems like why are we here? It just relieves a lot of pressure and built up tension in my body when I know that this is my moment, this is how I'm living, and I gotta just be in it. There's not like, I can't just like figure out an answer and things are gonna go the way I want it to go. Like, no, that's not how life works. Like, you're just here. So just freaking be here. The next thing that I have is to put that filter down when we are in front of people when we are around other human beings we tend to put a filter of our most beautiful happy self that we want other people to see and it's exhausting i'm constantly in my head when i'm anxious there's constant freaking stuff up here and sometimes i'm like you know what? i'm just gonna take that anxiety filter down and put it down and when you look around and you're just like okay it's quiet again like <sighs> i don't need to stress about being this way doing this thing how to get that like just put it down it's a filter. It, all that anxiety is a filter in your head and sometimes it's just, it's a, it's a good reminder to be like, it's just anxiety, like yeah, it's in there, you can't just like shut it off, but I can take the filter down and not listen to it. It's like cluttering my mind sometimes. Sometimes I find when I go to certain situations and I come back, I think about that situation and how I was and like, did I do this correctly? Oh, when I said X, Y, and Z, when she said this, was that a wrong thing? And like, did I say the wrong thing? Blah, blah, blah. Like it's just constant self-judgment, constant second guessing and it's exhausting and it doesn't serve me it doesn't serve me so when I notice that I'm going like a million miles an hour in my head I'm like I'm gonna take the filter down I literally picture myself <sighs> filter down okay I'm just gonna be here 
what happened happened i'm gonna stop self-criticizing myself because it's not freaking serving me it's just doing an injustice because now i just wasted moments of my life stressing out something that happened an hour ago that is like a minuscule moment in the whole day the next thing that i have is to please yourself first this is something that i've learned since moving to the city you need to put yourself first and not other people i am a constant people pleaser it's actually quite exhausting to be a people pleaser because you're constantly wondering what people think about you and guess what they're constantly worried about what people think about them we're all selfish creatures and if you think about it that way it's almost like a way to feed your ego because you're you're trying to please other people but you're not like oh i'm gonna please other people to make them happy like no you're pleasing them because you want to make yourself happy by getting approval of other people so it's a very selfish way of thinking if you truly think about it it sounds like it's not but it's really like you're literally thinking about your reputation basically making ourselves morph into this being that other people want us to be you need to put yourself first you need to like be an adult stand up for yourself speak for yourself and not let anybody take advantage of you there's certain things that i would want to say but i never did because i was afraid that I don't know I would look like a bitch I don't I don't know honestly I honestly just don't I don't like being like that for example like let's say you're working on a project for school it's a group project let's just have Renee do part A and I'll do part B but you know deep down that part A is like way more intense and in-depth and you know that you're gonna be putting more on your plate instead of saying actually no this is a lot um let's both do part A instead you're like okay because you're like okay like I want to be a nice person she seems cool I want to be your friend like whatever that's taking advantage of you and that's not okay you're putting more stress and anxiety on yourself because you were afraid to speak up and i had a friend recently tell me like something it was like an altercation and she was like she stood up for herself she's like all right everyone and uh, like she did what she had to do she was confident and people listened to her and yes it can come off as bitchy but at the same time you are putting yourself first and you're putting your happiness first you're not disadvantaging anyone but you are disadvantaging yourself if you allow that behavior and that's not okay so don't be afraid to offend other people because for me at least when I have anxiety and when I let that anxiety kind of manipulate and control myself in certain situations to get approval or anything from other people I tend to find myself in a wall backed up and then people consider that as weak and they take advantage of it and that's not okay and that's something that I've really been trying to focus on and I've been continuing to work on it's just stand up for yourself because a lot of the time that exudes confidence and guess what people are attracted to that confident energy the ninth thing is to stop over complicating everything i feel like the more we grow and the more we learn and the more we experience we are constantly bombarded with information and options and just a lot of stuff which complicates our thinking because we've been introduced to different things and it's just it's a lot for example like diet i think a lot of people have been bombarded with diet information and they don't know which way to turn which way to do what's the right diet how much is it like you can argue any point salmon is good for you because x y and z but salmon's bad for you because x y and z like stop over complicating I've been really focusing lately on simplifying my life. I don't need all this clutter externally because I am so freaking cluttered up here. What I'm trying to do is kind of simplify my life, simplify my options, and zone into just decluttering my life basically. Humans just overcomplicate everything and that just comes with so much stress, unnecessary stress. I think sometimes when anxiety starts going in our minds, one thought feeds another thought, feeds another thought, feeds another thought, and it's like if we just didn't have that thought process in the first place, we wouldn't be bombarded with all this information and all these different problems and concerns because we didn't overcomplicate the process. We just thought this thought and that's it. We didn't stem from that. We just were like, okay, here. You know what I'm saying? The next Next thing is to live in your moment and your surroundings, not your head. I find sometimes that my thoughts are so overwhelming that I don't even really comprehend or really even enjoy the moment. A really random example of this was when I was in the elevator going to my doctor's office. I was just sitting in the elevator and I was worried about, oh, like, I don't know what floor she's on. Is it gonna hurt? Because I was getting a laser treatment. Am I gonna have to sign these papers? Am I on time? Oh, I'm early. Shouldn't I? Like, all this stuff in my head. And I was just like, I'm in an elevator. I literally it was like, okay sit back enjoy the moment like stop with the thoughts like what is in your surrounding and i'm like i'm in an elevator i'm in a freaking out like that's it <sighs> and i will focus when things progressively become my reality when i get off that elevator then i'll focus on the rest i don't need to bombard my mind with these possibilities of what i am expecting just zone in to now what if life was just like one big game like what if someone told you hey by the way renee um this is a game and you can play it and you can either make it really fun and win or you can lose and make it really shitty. But either way, at the end of this, it's just a game. You would be like, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. Look at this 
game in front of us like what can we do today to play this game what can we do to boost up another level and when you look at life like that it is such a great feeling you don't take things too seriously you're just like having fun with it and you're playing the game and if let's say you go to bed and you messed up that day and something happened okay that's like a level down the next time i'm able to play the game i'm gonna do x y and z and then just watch my way work up the game ladder and sometimes you might fall but that's just the game and you just go right back up and i don't know why but that's just such a for me and it puts me very present so play the game and instead of playing that false narrative up here like you're in the game and just focus on your surroundings and play the game as it comes to you it seems very simple and the last tip that i have which is 11 if you made it this far it's a little bonus one for you guys is chemicals are in control i did a previous video about the chemicals in our brain and how you can like kind of manipulate and control and hack your brain to activate happiness because of the happiness chemicals at the end of the day we are all human beings the chemicals in our brains affect the way we feel the way we are that's life and i was watching Grey's anatomy and meredith said a quote and i was like oh my god i love this we like to imagine that we're in control but more often than not the chemicals in our brains control us and it's very true sometimes i feel almost guilty for having anxiety or guilty for feeling certain ways which cause more anxiety because my mind is almost telling me that something's wrong or something needs to change or something and i'm giving myself this anxiety by thinking about or putting pressure on my certain emotions and the way my body is operating and feeling guilty and all this crazy stuff when in actuality it's just your body doing what your body has to do losing that feeling and need to control every aspect of my life when i am not in control <sighs> just takes so much pressure off of me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not even in control. I don't know why. I feel like sometimes people who deal with anxiety feel the need to always be controlling something or be in control of certain situations. And in actuality, like we are never gonna be really in control. There are certain things that yes, we can control, but majority of the times the things that our anxiety is telling us that we are, aren't, what, whatever is our anxiety is telling us is beyond our control. So just, okay. You know, I hope that some of these tips helped you guys. I hope I was able to correlate it. Sometimes I have these like ideas in my head and it's really hard for me. See, I'm doing it now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys so much. Give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Comment down below if you guys have any extra anxiety tips for me. I would love to read through them. I'll see you guys all in a future video. Bye guys.